So I'll just move that and then I'll share my screen and then we'll get going. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. So let me click share, where am I? There we go. Okay, just give me a thumbs up if everyone can see that. Perfect. And another one if you can hear me. Oh, of course. <laughs> Else you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have put your thumbs up in the first place. Right. So I'll just move my participant thing over there in case anyone else joins later. So welcome. Thank you for joining. And thank you for joining on Facebook. It's going to be a little bit delayed on Facebook. So I'll try and keep track of things. But welcome to today's topic, which is five new five mistakes that new ma trainers make I put my teeth in when working with women. And it's kind of I mean, I don't claim to know everything about this field, because this field is massive. But it's kind of the mistakes that I made when I first started. And I thought if I share it, maybe it'll help people not make those mistakes or just get going a little bit earlier than I did. So let me just, there we go. So who am I? I'm Amy. Um, I'm a personal trainers council ambassador for Auckland. And so this is kind of who it's linked with. I started off in the fitness industry back in 2015 um, as a boot camp instructor. And that's kind of where I found out a lot of the issues that women were having in my boot camp, which I'll go through a bit later. Um, I started specializing in women's health fairly early on. I mean, it took me a couple of years to kind of go, oh, right, maybe I should look more into this. But it was probably 2017 that I finally started doing some courses. So it's a little while of me blagging my way through and hoping people knew what I was doing. Uh, I became a holistic core restore coach in 2018. And that's kind of where I started the whole focus on women's health. And I opened up my own business, Connect Health, Fitness and Wellness, which ideally is designed to help women connect to their body at any life phase. So I will be talking kind of about pelvic health and women's health a little bit, but that's only a small part of the puzzle. But enough about me, you want to know what the five mistakes are. So I'll go through the five mistakes that I made and then I'll go through them a little bit in more detail later. So the first one was the pre-screen. I never asked any specific female related questions. That's my first one. And then the client's birth story. So a lot of people, I think, Mums and bubs fitness classes and things like that are kind of people think of them as a bit of a cash cow because all the mums want to lose weight and get their baby body back. But without learning their birth story, it can be a bit dangerous. Then the other one was giving them traditional core exercises, which I'll go through in a bit. Ignoring incontinence when people said, Do you mind if we don't do this? And not having a good referral network. So those are my top five mistakes that I could think of but I've got to limit it else I'll go on forever so number one the pre-screen so as I said I didn't ask any real female specific questions when I first started as a boot camp instructor my my pre-screen kind of was limited to have you got any injuries that was it that that was it and it wasn't really until I started because so I became a personal trainer later and then learned about cardiovascular disease and blood pressure and checking for all of those things. But I still didn't check any women's health issues, any incontinence, any prolapse, any abdominal or gynecological surgeries. Because people kind of, they willingly go, oh, I can't squat because I've had knee surgery. But they won't say, oh, I can't jump or run because I've got a prolapse. Like they, People don't really willingly put that forward because, it, I mean, it's embarrassing. It's not something you really want to talk about. 
So what can we add to that? Just to just to kind of invite that conversation. Like I'm never really telling everybody that you have to you have to start talking about incontinence and prolapse and hysterectomies and saying the word vagina to your new in your new consultation. But what can you add to that just to get them thinking that, oh, maybe it's something I should bring up if I'm having issues. And what I've put in the chat box is a link to um, the Continents New Zealand pre-screen form. So what I started to do is I started to kind of build my own pre-screen based on their questions, based on the like the reps um, questions. I kind of picked a few and popped them in my own since then because I am working with women only it's like war and peace it's very in-depth but if you're doing general population just having those little tick boxes like do you leak when you exercise or what causes these things it might just have that open the conversation a little bit so there's the link anyway continents.org.nz just if you wanted to write that down and then you can search through the website and find just let Jane in and have a look and see what they do in there so let's just go back to that yes and so if you have a woman coming to you and she has just had a baby and she wants to lose her baby weight just just having on the pre-screen form have you had your six-week checkup it's not enough because the doctors or the midwives don't necessarily check everything. They kind of go, yep, are you healing all right? Is your scar healing all right if you've had a C-section? And how are you feeling? Oh, yeah, feeling all right. Now, how heavy is the baby? How long is the baby? What? How's baby doing? It's kind of, that's kind of it. So, which is why I wanted to put in about birth story so I'm not again I'm not saying that you have to ask all these questions but if you if you know how they gave birth whether it was six weeks ago or six years ago just understanding that maybe if they've had a cesarean section they might not be able to they might have kind of scar tissue issues they might have issues where they feel a bit stuck still after a few years they might have had birth trauma they might have had multiple births which like like twins or triplets and things might have been stretched and just understanding how things were yeah have any questions about that just let me know in the comments i can't see the chat at the moment but let me know in the comments and I'll ask, answer them later. And oh, the SPD and PGP at the end, that is if they had symphysis pubis dysfunction or pelvic girdle pain. And like if you're training someone who's pregnant, they might have issues with this, which is kind of pain, discomfort, stiffness within the pelvis. And they might not be able to do exercises that requires taking their legs apart because it hurts, for example. So asking questions about that, it should, it should kind of ease off after they've given birth, but sometimes things might still feel a bit stuck, especially because everything stretches and it's got to go back. It's just understanding the dynamics of the body, checking how they're moving and freeing up anything that might be stuck due to their pregnancy and birth. My third one, and this is the biggest, I, I just gave traditional core exercises. And by traditional core exercise, I mean sit-ups and bicycles and Russian twists and planks. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily bad, but it was, it was prescribing them when they're not ready for them. So if you've got somebody who has a diastasis recti, which I'm not, I'm not showing you how to check today because... Again, we could go on for hours. But if somebody has a diastasis and they do sit-ups and they get doming, 
then a sit up isn't the right exercise for them at that point. They need to kind of regress back, find something that doesn't cause doming, and then slowly, progressively low, like we do with anything else. Like if you're rehabbing a shoulder or a knee, you check what causes symptoms and then regress back so they don't get symptoms and then start progressively loading later. And I have a couple of stories of past clients who I blindly gave exercises to. And the first one, um, she came to me at my boot camp and she'd had a C-section. I can't remember how old her, her baby was at the time, but she had a C-section. She wanted to tone her tummy and I went, yep, all right. And when I gave everybody else sit-ups and bicycles and toe touches and leg raises, I gave her the same thing. And it wasn't until she mentioned that, oh, when I do this exercise, I get burning on my scar that I kind of went, what? And this was in the middle of a session. I'm trying to be all, ha, 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 go, 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 go. And it went, oh, no. What? what okay and I had to kind of then go right okay which exercises didn't give you burning and she's like oh well this one felt all right when I did this okay but it I didn't I didn't have the tools to kind of know to check her earlier and see what she could do earlier before the session I just yeah blind blindly went through and gave her something else and I saw this meme, which I couldn't find, so I made it myself. It says, a C-section is the only major surgery in which you're given no rehab and a new baby to take care of. And that's just it. You're, you've got incisions through your stomach. You've got connective tissue all pulled apart. You've got organs that have been cut. And then everything as it heals gets a bit stuck together because it goes from the size of a beach ball to the size of a ping pong ball and it's only logical really that you need to kind of rehab this and learn again how to reconnect to your body and how it works so just blindly going in and going yep yeah, okay right your scars healed let's do some sit-ups wasn't really enough and I didn't know what to do with her really apart from just regress the exercises. So talking to her beforehand would have helped. Um, my second client, and this is the client who kind of made me wake up and realize that I was probably breaking people when I was doing my boot camp because I had mainly mums, new mums in my boot camp. She came to me, she was a physio. So this woman will call her Alex. And she came to my boot camp because she liked the community. She saw a boot camp when we were training on the beach and she was like, oh, that looks like fun. And she came up to me at the start and said, now, Amy, I'm a physio. I have a diastasis recti. I know what to do to heal it. So if you give me an exercise that I can't do, I'll do something else. And I was like, all right, mate, you do you. Cool. Right. And it wasn't until maybe a couple of weeks into it I think she was on a four-week trial that I started to get to know her and I felt a bit more confident in broaching the subject and I was like okay what what is this diastasis because you've been doing all these different exercises she was doing I think she's a Pilates instructor as well so she was doing like heel slides and different things like that and side planks and I was like what is it she went, okay, right. Well, it's it's this gap. I've got a gap between my six-pack muscles from when I had my baby. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Like, I could show you if you like. And she'd lay on the bench outside in the middle of Browns Bay and grabbed my hand and went, here, feel. And she put my hand, it went inside her tummy. And I went, <gasps> oh, okay, right. That's what that is. That's why you're doing different exercises. Holy crap, I'm breaking people. It was, it was like, I just freaked out. And 
internally of course because she's a client and I just went oh wow yeah yeah that's amazing <laughs> I didn't know about that before thank you for showing me that inside I'm dying so yeah she she was the first person who opened up about it and that was only really because she was a physiotherapist she knew about the body she knew what to talk about whereas general population don't they just go oh yeah I want to lose my baby weight tone my tummy because I still look pregnant and that brings me to my third client and this one luckily I saw her after I did my training and became a holistic core store coach and she came and saw me she said she has been doing these sit-ups she's been doing exercises and it just looks like she's got a Toblerone sticking up on her tummy every time she does a sit-up every time she does any of the core exercises she gets this Toblerone she doesn't know what it is and so I checked her out I was like okay so where are you training at the moment she said she's training at a gym she does a boot camp she's got a personal trainer and she's trying to tone her tummy because she looks pregnant she's fed up of looking six months pregnant I think she was saying I can't remember the exact number but she was embarrassed and she hated it and so I said okay so what exercises have you been given have you been given bicycles yes sit-ups yes planks yes and you're noticing this Toblerone all the time yes I'm like okay she's like, should I not be doing those no so I got her to hop on the bed and I filmed her and I'm going to show you that video so this is her so I mean she had disclaimer first she has got a hernia as well so it probably looks a lot worse than others but yeah oh, where's the cutting gone there we go so the moment she lifted her leg up it went I'll play it a couple of times. Oh, no, that's the next video. There is a happy ending to this story. So, yeah, I filmed this just to go, look, this is what's happening when you do bicycles. So every time she lifted her leg up, the intra-abdominal pressure that was caused, because a lot of people hold their breath when they're doing bicycles or sit-ups, it was causing her the air to push out onto her weakened midline and push out the org in this case the organs because it was a hernia through a hole whereas normal diastasis is just a thinning of the tissue if you have a hernia it is a hole and that needs surgery but I was helping her out before she went for surgery because she had to save money because having a tummy tuck or anything is means um cosmetic surgery so they don't do it under acc or anything like that so that's that's what happened before and so i sent that video to her boot camp instructor i gave her alternative exercises that she could do without causing that and told her anytime you, you got an exercise that you know does that do something else and I pre-warned her instructor and he was like okay oh yeah sweet thanks so after some guided exercises I think we worked on breath work she did some self-massage on her tummy and coordinating everything with the pelvic floor eventually things started to look a bit better so this is five sessions later I think five or six sessions later now I did check her first so she has got a big dent where I had my fingers poking her tummy in and she has got a fair bit of excess skin because she lost a lot of weight beforehand so that's what that is so if I just press that so there's a little bit but see the difference so just from doing a just from regressing it back and getting her to control everything and understand what it means to feel that control within your torso and within your with your breathing then you don't get that intra-abdominal pressure you don't get it pushing out and you don't get the doming i should have put a before and after picture of her standing up but i didn't never mind so yes 
that is that so it, you can improve things my mistake number four and this was one I was quite embarrassed about when I when I knew better I was quite embarrassed I did I ignored incontinence and what happened really is it's kind of incontinence has been normalized I remember watching TV as a teenager and seeing a tenor advert or a poise advert and it was like are you doing your kegels do you need to do your pelvic floor exercises are you leaking and it had a picture of a pregnant woman kind of looking upwards concentrating at the checkout and that was kind of it like oh if you wet yourself buy these pads and then I've had friends go oh just you wait you don't know just you wait till you have kids then you'll have a tiny bladder then you'll be running to the toilet all the time then this then this then this and it just didn't sit right with me I was like no that doesn't no but before I knew better I had women at boot camp going oh do you mind if I don't run because I'll leak if I run do you mind if I don't do box jumps? Do you mind if I don't do jumping jacks? Do you mind if I don't do skipping? Because I, I will leak. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, right. And in my head, and what was discussed amongst the women when it was only women in the boot camp and the men had skived off that day, it was like, oh, yeah, I've got a pad. You can put a pad on. Oh, yeah, I need to run to the toilet before I do this. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And everyone was just laughing it off. Oh, yeah, I get that all the time. Oh, yeah. And it was just, it, and I laughed with them. I kind of just went, oh, yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, the joys of being a woman. Ah, ha, ha. And it's not like that. And I was really disappointed because the woman who first told me, I tried my best to help her. And I was Googling and I was looking things up. And I found something that said skipping. Skipping will help with strengthening the pelvic floor. And I proudly went back to her and I went, oh, yeah, you can do skipping because skipping will help the pelvic floor. And she's like, skipping makes me leak. Like you try telling somebody that skipping is good for the pelvic floor when they leak doing skipping. I, it just doesn't work. It doesn't add up. And I understand the theory. So I'll just put this. Is, these are some of the reasons that can cause people to leak. I understand the theory behind it. So with a fully functioning pelvic floor that doesn't have any, that hasn't been stretched through childbirth or through consistent pressure bearing down, it hasn't got any um, tight areas, it's not pulled out. It's like a fully functioning, perfectly healthy pelvic floor when everything is bouncing, when you're running and jumping, the pelvic floor naturally reacts and resists that bounce. So it would strengthen it and it would work and it would all work as a fully functioning system. But if you have pelvic floor dysfunction, it's not going to, it's not going to work like that. And I want to mention as well, so incontinence doesn't just mean urine. They could leak feces during anything. They could, it could be someone farting doing a sit-up. That is classed as incontinence. If you cannot control what's coming out of your backside or your front side, then that is a, some form of dysfunction, okay? And one in three women will have some form of incontinence at some point in their life. So it's not, it's not uncommon. And that's one thing I want to touch on. It is because so many people think, oh yeah, it, it happens to everyone. It becomes normalized, but it is common, not normal. Okay. Last, but definitely not least, I didn't have a referral network. So I, if someone told me something was wrong, it was like, oh, okay. Um, have you spoken to a physio? Have you spoken to your doctor? Have you spoken? I kind of asked if they'd spoken to somebody, but I didn't have anyone I could recommend. I didn't have anyone I could trust. And it wasn't really until I did 
um, the Continents New Zealand course. So I highly recommend that if you wanted to just brush up on this knowledge because they cover so much and you can they give you good tools to use in your regular training. But yeah, I didn't I didn't have a referral network. And so I recommend have a look in your area and I've got a directory to find a women's health physiotherapist. They don't just look at your pelvic floor, they look at how everything works as a whole, but find someone who does internal checkups. Because yes, you can go for an ultrasound, but an ultrasound doesn't kind of give the whole picture. They could do a transperineal ultrasound, they could place the, the probe on the outside of your vagina and they can see if everything's moving but they can't test for any tight areas and they can't feel if you are lifting up or how well you're lifting up and it's just not not as thorough not as thorough obviously there's going to be women who don't really want a digital exam and would prefer that and it does have its place but if someone can do an internal examination and like a normal physio, if you've got a tight point here, they would release it. If they've got a tight point within the vagina, they can release it within those pelvic floor muscles just by pressing. So it does help. And they can check if someone's too tight or too loose because dysfunction and incontinence doesn't necessarily mean that their pelvic floor is too weak. It could be that it's too tight. So if you're ever not sure, refer out. And by referring your clients out, it's not really admitting that you're a crap trainer. It's, it's telling them that you want the best for them. And it means that they're going to trust you more and hopefully they'll come back. I mean, like I, I don't like taking clients and keeping them forever. My goal is kind of taking them, getting in touch, getting them in touch with their body, helping them to put all the pieces together, getting the brain connected to the body as well, so that they can go back and live the life that they want to live and do the exercise they want to do and go to the, the gym that they want to go to. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of having a network that you just trust and you can work with. So that's it. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Hopefully I didn't blah, 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 word vomit all over you. But I will stop the screen share. And yeah, if you've got any questions, I mean, now you suppose you can unmute yourself. This is being recorded, though, so your question will be included in the video. And I'm going to look on in Facebook as well, if I find the page. Ooh, no questions. I've baffled you all. Let's just have a look before we go. There is one comment. Oh, that was just someone. Erica, thanks for watching. She had to go. Amy, I'll ask a question. Yes. When it comes to, um, I can't even say it, diastasis. Diastasis. Diastasis recti. Diastasis. Um, are you with clients that say don't have any discomfort or pain because you talked about the burning sensations or obviously it could be all sorts of different ways people feel uncomfortable doing core exercises but yeah. what if the core exercises you've selected are perhaps even quite challenging but not causing discomfort and there is a little bit of separation how do you deal with that um i think what i do i mean it all comes down to the consultation at the start so when i when i see people and they've ticked certain boxes on the pre-screen that yes I've had a baby or yes I've noticed a gap maybe they've checked themselves so I kind of check that and see what they can do then and yeah but if there's no pain or discomfort no even pain or discomfort just keep going like if it's yeah. there's no yells from the body if there's no whispers even of of discomfort you just yeah. keep progressing there's no real kind of 
protocol no, on of... how challenging core exercises should be post postpartum there's no limit mm. it's all it all depends on the client it all depends on the person because if they if they don't have any issues like a diastasis can heal by itself perfectly fine and sometimes they might have a gap that the connective tissue in between is tight Mm. so it can still transfer load so it doesn't really matter if they've got a four centimeter gap but you're hitting it like that rather than going all the way in then if they can transfer load and they can do the exercise without without any symptoms then they can keep going as long as they can keep breathing as well valsalva Mm. has its place but it's not it's not helpful if there is any dysfunction mm-hmm. cool. does that help does that answer yeah yeah no I've got a client that's um second baby and just I think a bit of a, a warrior and you kind of think as in worry as in like a strong person it's not, not worrying worrying about just yeah. someone who tolerates and you kind of like I don't really want to push beyond and it's something without feeling for yourself and obviously having not had children um, yeah. I feel quite uneducated and I've been to the course I've done the, the continence course and all that kind of things but it's yeah. just a matter of judging the uh, um, ability to to read pain and, and listen have to the wishes I will say have you checked yeah, tummy? there is a little so uh, there a little separation um, but how how long generally does a woman take to like you say it does heal naturally it does sort of come back together but how long is usual for that to happen I think it's it's that lovely answer that we all how long's love a piece to give string? and hate to receive. Yeah, how long's a piece of string? Because if they're not, if they're holding their breath when they're doing certain exercises and pushing out, or they're holding their breath when they're lifting their child, or they don't have safe lifting or breathing techniques, and things are going to be a bit worse. Or even if they're they're training and they've got really tight obliques like that could pull and keep that gap open so all, there's all different things that you can do to assist some healing and things that will keep it open for longer as well yeah cool. does that help yeah yeah for sure yeah but yeah it's all kind of check 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 everything's data everything's information just ask her if she notices anything, ask her how she's feeling. If she's feeling fine, then progress her. If you mm. notice that she looks like she's holding her breath and just pushing through it, then maybe just dial it back a little bit and say, hang on, I just want you to breathe. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, thank you. All right. Any other questions? I think a few people have dropped off. We've got... Greg and Jenny and Kim, any questions from you guys? Greg, you shook your head. No, you're all good. Thank you for coming. That's it. So yes, if there's no other questions, I will sign off there. Good. Any other questions though, please feel free to email me. It's info at connecthealth.fitness and I can answer questions privately if you don't want to ask them here. It's all right. I hope it was a nice lunch, Jenny. (laughs) Thank you. See you later.